Hey everyone, Daniel from Twin Bytes with another tutorial for you. And this time I'm going to show you how to encrypt and decrypt your backups using Cobian Reflector. This is assuming that you already know the basic use of Cobian Reflector and how to set it up and get a basic backup going. If not, then you can check out my full length video, which is linked within this video here. So when you go in to edit the settings, we'll just back out of here and if you right click on your backup task and go to edit task, you want to go to the archive tab. This is where you'll see a few options for compression type. By default, it may be on no compression. So from here, we've got three options and we're going to go through each one. So compressing the files individually is going to back up and password protect your files within each folder. So you would turn on the box the checkbox here to encrypt the files and choose a password and confirm it you can put a hint if you want to get help to remember what your password is because if you forget it you won't be able to recover your backup so you want to make sure that you don't forget your backup otherwise if you really do need to re uh, restore or rely on your backups then you're going to be screwed if you can't remember your password so we're gonna have a look at these uh, in a moment but we'll go through uh, the rest of the settings here so the compressed files individually is one there's a separated monolithic archives and you again would just it's the same thing put the checkbox to encrypt put a password maybe a hint and you're good it does give you a note here about compression works only with local sources so you can't do this over the network and uh, FTP or anything like that it won't work and then any non separated backups will always be converted into a full backup so it's going to be all uh, combined into one you're going to see the examples here in a minute and then the global is also going to uh, give you the same options below but it's going to put them all together into one folder so let's have a look how these look like. So if we were to do a compress files individually, I've got a folder here, how it was done. I had three separate folders that were being backed up. And if I drill down, then you'll see that each individual file is encrypted. And if you go to open it, it shows what the file is, but then try to open that actual file. And it says it can't do that without extracting it. And of course, extracting it requires a password. We'll go into extracting and restoring in a minute, but let's look at the rest of these. The next one is separated monolithic. So if I look at uh, example here, I'll go into the first folder and you can see that the folder itself is encrypted from that level. If you drill down into it, you'll see the individual files and it shows that they're uh, lit up with the right colors for the logos for those files so it looks like they're accessible but again if you try it, it says it can't do it the next one here is global monolithic archives again you have the same message but let's have a look here in the example of when we did a backup it shows temp test so that's my top level folder if I go in there then it shows a folder called encrypted and it's got a zip file icon. I can open that and see my three folders. And within that has the files. Again, if you try opening them, you can. So there might be a question about because it backs up from the top level folder and it shows all three folders there, would it include other folders that are not selected for backup? And the answer is no. So if I look at the temp test folder, I can see in here the source. It does include a fourth folder, but it's not backing that one up. It's only backing up the ones that I selected. So if I look at my actual backup sources here, it shows that it's only backing up folder one, two, and three in that folder, and it's not including four. So when we have the archive set for global, it'll combine them all into one folder, but it won't include other folders that were not selected. Okay, so next is how do you restore it? 
you would want to go up to tools and go to decompressor here you can choose the folder you want to decompress or extract I'm choosing the global one for this example it's going to be a lot easier and the destination directory you can put anything you want there and it could go to a temporary location which is always recommended just in case but it could go back to the original location if you want and you can also tell it to overwrite any existing files if you want to of course we need to have the password in order to decompress and extract these files which is the whole point of this then you would just hit decompress it shows you what it's doing and then at the very end it tells you where it went from and where it's going to how many errors there are how many files were extracted and decompressed and if there were any errors and then the button changes back to decompress again when it's finished if we look at our temporary restore location we'll see the top level folder and then there's our individual folders and then of course our files and you can see that it actually opens up. And that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you did find it helpful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, even better, give it a super thanks, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.